the 1920s and perhaps even earlier, scientists have discovered many different ways of making energy less expensive and more efficient. However, in every single case, their technology was suppressed. And in many cases, the inventors died under strange circumstances. Okay, you've got my attention now. Charles Pogue was a Canadian mechanic and car tinkerer. In the early 1930s, he started experimenting with carburetors, trying to improve fuel efficiency. Now, if you're not a gearhead, a carburetor is a part of a gas-powered engine that mixes air and fuel for combustion. The mixture is then sent to the engine cylinders, where it's ignited to power the engine. Now, unlike traditional carburetors, which mix air with liquid gasoline, the Poe carburetor fully vaporized gas before it entered the combustion chamber. This made the engine more efficient, much more efficient. In 1936, Pogue was issued a patent for a high mileage carburetor. This was his third iteration of the invention and his third patent. In early 1936, the Breen Motor Company tested the Pogue carburetor on a Ford V8 coupe. It got 26.2 miles on one pint of gasoline. That's almost 220 miles per gallon. Ford tested it. They got 200 miles per gallon. The Pogue carburetor was tested for Canadian Automotive Magazine. They reported 218 miles per gallon. Now that article created a lot of excitement, but it wasn't good news for Charles Pogue. On the Toronto Stock Exchange, oil company stock prices crashed. Brokers were swamped with orders to dump all oil stock immediately. Soon after that, Pogue's shop was broken into. All carburetors, equipment, notes, and documents were stolen. He never built another one. He never spoke of the invention ever again. Someone got to him. That's the rumor. But carburetors aren't complicated. If one man figures out how to make an engine more efficient, others could do this too. And they did. But the oil companies did not forget about Pogue and the damage he almost caused. Fuel-efficient engines were not good for business. So the oil companies lobbied the U.S. government for help. And a few years later, in 1951, help arrived. The concept of patents can be traced back to ancient times, but the formal patent system that we know today came from Renaissance Europe. The first known patent law was enacted in Venice in 1474, and it was a revolutionary idea designed to